Oh, how do you do? I'm Wayne Geminer. I'm doing a technical video training film on the setup and run operation on a Winslowmatic HC drill grinder. And basically, the way it's going to go is I'm going, right now I'm grinding a three quarter inch drill, 135 degree included angle. As I mentioned, on the machine right now, I am grinding a 135 degree included angle. That angle formed here. But the unique part of this uh, grinding operation is I am taking a 118 degree included angle drill blank, or this picture here, 118 degrees, and I am simply converting this piece of stock into the into the 135 degree conventional point that the customer requires. Okay, in resuming the operation, I already have my settings, uh, my basic settings for the machine. I know approximately where my wheel is because I've been doing this job. All I need to do now is turn the wheel on by pulling the knob, turning the coolant switch on, and the cycle switch. Now I'm ready to grind. All I have to do now is turn this handle clockwise and it feeds uh, the wheel into the drill. The normal stock removal in an operation like this is probably half of this distance to the stock. But bear in mind, I am converting a 118 degree conventional point blank into 135 degrees. So I have to take off quite a bit of stock. Because the drill is three quarter inches in diameter, it takes a considerably longer period of time to grind the drill without bogging down the machine. But when I get to my stop, then I will let the uh, machine cycle about six ro uh, eight rotations to put a fine finish on the drill. There, now I have fed my uh, wheel to the stop and I'm gonna let it cycle about four or five more times in. Seven, eight. Now, I backed off the wheel after I heard the grind so that I don't uh, mess up the point. I'm just gonna remove the drill. I'm gonna inspect it and I have a perfect finish. I have my perfect chisel angle that I want. I have perfect clearance on the drill. Now, I'll just put it in this device here and I will remove my finished product and install my, my, my last one and finish this, this grind. I don't want to turn the machine off. I, I want production, so I'll just let it run in cycle. Now, I'm feeding the drill in again. And I will be finishing up my three quarter inch, 100, 135 degree conventional point. And I will demonstrate when I finish the grind on this drill what it is that I've done again. Now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, spark out and back off before it started the next grind. I'm going to remove the drill because I'm fairly confident that it is ground correctly. And all I'm looking for is I'm looking at the surface of the drill and it's perfect finish. I'm looking for the clearance angle and I'm looking for the chisel angle and it's exactly what I want. Now, I'm going to convert the machine from three quarter inch, 135 degree included angle conventional point to a 118 degree included angle conventional point on a half inch drill. I'm gonna turn the cycler off, coolant off, wheel off. Okay, I'm gonna turn my cycle switch on until I get this device lined up at somewhere around 12 o'clock. Yeah, a little far. There we go. This device here is called the locator. 
And when I'm grinding 135 degree conventional points, there's a little mark on this locator device and I want it lined up to the C. That's for 135 degree point angles. However, I'm going to convert or make this setup into a 118 degree point so the locator has to be lined up on the A. There, I've lined it up. I'm going to tighten it down, tighten it down. Also, when I was doing a 135 degree point angle, I changed my point angle selector. Uh, it will not be possible to see it, but there's a, there's a dial here and there's a line scribed here. And right now it's set at 135 degrees. However, I need it at 118. So I'm going to loosen these two set screws. And as you notice the head fell down. And I'm just going to line up this mark now to 118 degrees, which I've done. And I will lock it in place. And I'm set up now basically for 118 degree points. Okay, the next step is to change the bushing plate. The bushing plate is what holds the drill in place while we're grinding it. All I have to do is pull this back and turn it a little bit, take my guard off so I can get at it, and then the back, there's a little uh, spring-loaded cam on there, and I'm going to turn it until I can get it off. I'll grab my my other bushing plate, which happens to have the half-inch bushing on it. Always clean that off, clean this bore off, get the sand out. Now, on the face of the wheel, it gives you the various sizes of drill bushings that are on the device. The size of the drill is on top, and the bushing is actually on the bottom. So all I have to do is install it, turn that spring-loaded cam, bring my half inch up to 12 o'clock, release that until it fits in. That takes care of it. Okay, the next step, we're going, we went from a three-quarter inch down to a half inch. I have to select uh, a drill holder that will accommodate the shank size of the drill. So I have one here, it's for a half inch to five-eighths, I think. At any rate, the holder is spring-loaded, spring-loaded, very powerful spring with uh, a couple sets of coll rubber collets in it. It also has a locating pin right here. And that pin has to be placed in this loader with the handle in this approximate position. But in the holder, we have this groove here that the pin has to fit into. We also have a bottom plate here that the bottom of the holder has to ride in and also, we have a little cradle here that this and this slot has to slide into. So what I do is I put it in the little cradle first with my pin down and then the bottom of the holder resting on this bottom plate. Now, when I push the button down on the handle and go all the way down, it will squeeze uh, to see it, you should be able to see the movement here. That squeezes the collet in the spring so that I can remove the plug and put my drill in. And when I, bring, when I push the button on this handle and bring it back up to that position, the drill holder will very solidly grab the drill. The next step is to bring the drill holder up to a proc, not quite up to 12 o'clock, about 11.30. And then what happens is the timer itself will come forward to the drill. Each one of these barrels here represents a range of different sizes. Right now, I, what I did is I went, I loosened the bolt here and I went from the three quarter inch one to the half inch one. It's marked right on here. I just loosen it up and rotate it this way or this way to get it in position. And then all I do is I go that way, push the button down, and I can push my drill up 
and I can insert it so that I bottom out against this half inch uh, barrel here and it come back and what I have accomplished here I have timed my drill axially and radially this way and what I'm trying to do here when I'm timing it I want the drill always to stick out that so far maybe an inch and a half of this particular drill so far from here every drill so that I can grind them and then I want the cutting lip of the drill itself to be lined up perpendicular to 12 o'clock and I take my drill and I'm just going to turn it on here and demonstrate how I'm doing it but there is my pin and here's my locator my locator has a little slot here I'm going to just stick it in there and I have that now on my chart on the top of the machine or in a book I simply refer to the 118 degree chart and a half an inch and it says that my grind position should be at 260 it's at 250 now so I'm going to turn it 10 thousandths that's my grind position and my lift dial should be at nine the lift dial is in the middle and how I work that is it has numbers on it and a pin at 12 o'clock I pull it out and turn it to my desired number I want nine nine is at 12 o'clock and I want to fit it into the little pin there then I refer to the chart and I need uh, eight on the feed dial I do the same thing it's on 15 right now I pull it out rotate it keep pulling it out until I get to my number and when my number eight is at 12 o'clock I just wiggle it into the pin and I have it then it's very simple from there pull the switch here turns the wheel on and then I'm going to turn my cycle switch on the reason I didn't turn the coolant on is I want to get my my setup here for how close I am to the wheel and what I'm doing here is I'm getting the drill so that it just touches the, the wheel and it does and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to loosen this lock nut and I'm going to give myself about 90 degrees of removal so now I have my setup. I'm going to back it off now and just put my cover on my little thing here so I don't get the oil all over the place. And I'm just going to turn my coolant on, coolant switch on, and I'm going to grind. And I know I'm going to hit right about there. I'm feed now I'm feeding the wheel into the drill point as the machine cycles. On a half inch drill, I can feed it faster than I did on that three quarter inch. There, now I set it in and I'm going to give myself about six or eight uh, uh, cycles to finish grinding and put a nice finish on the drill. Now I backed off the wheel without a grinding sound. I'm going to remove the drill, check for my geometries, and I have them.